today we are studying about compound leaves so what are compound leaves in order to study about a compound leaf we first need to look at the structure of a simple leaf so drawing the structure of a simple leaf we have the petiole and leaf lamina this is the leaf lamina or leaf blade this part is called the apex or tip of the leaf now the petiole while entering into the leaf it's called the midrib the branches arising from the midrib are called veins and the part of the midrib outside the leaf is called the petiole drawing the structure of the now compound leaf we see that the branches of the main stem give rise to a number of leaflets and these leaflets together give an appearance of a simple leaf so the aggregation of discrete units given the appearance of a simple and entire leaf is called a compound leaf the stalk given rise to multiple leaflets is called the rachis these leaf resembling structures are now called leaflets a compound leaf may be of two kinds that is finitely compound leaves and finitely compound leaves now depending upon the number of leaflets present in a finitely compound leaf we have two kinds of finitely compound leaves that is imparipinnate and paripinnate here the number of leaflets is 5 which is an odd number so since the leaflets are not present in pairs they are called as imparipinnate compound leaves drawing the structure of paripinnate compound leaf we see that the leaflets are present opposite each other forming pairs here number of leaflets of pinnae is n which is an even number and so the leaflets are present in pairs so the name paripinnately compound leaves An example of imparipinately compound leaf is rose, belonging to family Rosaceae. While the example of a paripinnate compound leaf is tamarind. Now, depending upon the number of rages, they can be unipinnately compound leaves, bipinnately compound leaves, tripinnately compound leaves, and decompound leaves. Drawing the structure of a unipinnately compound leaf. in this structure we see that the main stem of a plant gives rise to a rachis and this rachis gives rise to multiple leaflets or pinnae the aggregation of these leaflets or pinnae resemble a simple leaf structure together so this leaf will be called as unipinnately compound leaf example of such leaf is neem rose or cycas Now drawing the structure of a bipinnately compound leaf, here we see the main stem gives rise to rachis, and the rachis again give rise to a secondary rachis instead of giving rise to leaflets directly. Here we see the secondary rachis give rise to different leaflets. Aggregation of those. resemble a leaf so in here secondary rachis is also gives the appearance of a leaf so is the case with the primary rachis so we call in this type of compound leaves as bipinnately compound leaves an example of such leaf is acacia coming to the third category that is tripinnately compound leaves Here we see the primary rachis, the secondary rachis, and the tertiary rachis. The main rachis giving rise to a secondary rachis, and the secondary rachis is also going to give rise to a tertiary rachis. Example is moringa. The fourth category is 
D compound here we see four rakai in total the main rakis secondary rakis tertiary rakis and then tertiary rakis also gives rise to a quaternary rakis bearing a number of leaflets and as such an aggregation of leaflets is formed an example of such compound leaf is coriander the second category of compound leaves is palmately compound leaves in here we see that the main stem or branch of main stem gives rise to a number of leaflets which are joined at a common point with the petiole they may be unifoliate bifoliate trifoliate or multifoliate drawing the structure of a unifoliate leaf we see that only one leaflet is attached to the petiole an example of such leaf is found in lemon now drawing the structure of bifoliate palmately compound leaf we have the main branch given rise to petioles the petioles give rise to two leaflets at a time the example of bifoliate palmately compound leaf is bohemia similarly we have three leaf lamina at the same time in trifoliate leaves and so on example is oxalis in quadrifoliate leaves we see that the petiole gives rise to four leaflets from a common point example is marsilia in pentafoliate or multifoliate palmately compound leaf we see five leaflets arising from a common point of the petiole pentafoliate leaf or multifoliate leaf example is bombax